Steve, let me just hear how you sound. Yeah, dude. Stayed up pretty late editing vlog number three. I know I said I wasn't gonna do that, but whatever. Anyway, then I had to wake up really early the next morning, and then the following night I was up really late because we went out to go see In Q perform. Remember In Q from the podcast? That's so amazing. Anyway, I finally got a great night of sleep last night. I just woke up. My brain is kind of like scrambled. But luckily, I know a cure for that. All right, let's go. Kids are good, and everybody's good. You, you know what I mean. And yeah, all your awesome. stuff is so amazing. I so just nice love to your. See you keep fighting. I you're am. Rocking it, I know? am. And it's an, it's inspiring. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you're sharing your story. It's powerful. Yeah. All right. All right, so you take, take care, care of yourself. Up. I will. Bye, Shannon. <laughs> Not bad, not great either. Kind of an appropriate metaphor for this vlog. The best part of that whole experience was running into my friend Shannon, Ultra Shannon, Shannon for our griefer. She's an absolute legend in the ultra running world. She's done incredible things. She's run Badwater like, I don't know how many times, but like a lot. And I think she's the first, I know she's the first woman Maybe the first person, I'm not sure I gotta look it up, but to do a double bad water crossing, which is a 270 mile foot race. Like she's incredible, amazing, amazing person. So it's great to reconnect with her. She's going through a lot of stuff right now. I suggest picking up the latest issue of Trail Runner Magazine, Trail Magazine. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but there's a whole profile story about her. All right, busy day, first stop, the office. That's pretty cool. All right, I got about two hours to deal with the necessary evil that is email and to record the podcast introductions for Monday's show with Jack Canfield, who is a self-improvement author. Uh, he's the chicken soup for the soul guy. He's written like 500,000 New York Times bestsellers. So don't have a lot of time, gotta get it done. All right, got it all done. Next stop, Hollywood. You drive. How's it going? Go, cool, man. Hiya, brother. Yeah, man. Good to see you. Yeah. 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 My dad. Hi, I'm Rich. How's it going? Trapper. Ted, How's it going, man? Right on, brother. Good. Cool. This Hi, is Trapper. Trapper. Trapper Ted. Yeah. Very nice to meet you. Hey. Check out Walter's not barking or anything. Hello. How many you got? Two. I have two cats and two dogs. Two cats and two dogs. I'm so excited about this. Dude, man, thanks for doing it. Yeah, of course, man. Yeah, I remember people asking me about you and your podcast before realizing that I, that I knew you. I've heard you say a couple times, like, dude, everybody's got a, everybody's got a fucking podcast. 
So I was like, yeah, I'm just not gonna be that guy. I, I, I don't, I don't classify your podcast in that way, man. I have so many questions for you. I got a lot for you. I was just, just talking with my dad uh, on the way over here. And I was just thinking, like, how are we giving this away? <laughs> it's gonna be so good. <laughs> I know. Yeah, let me just hear how you sound. Yeah, dude. Perfect. It's so, so cool you came here, man. I really oh, appreciate man. it. It's, uh, it's more fun for me, because then I get to see, like, how they're sure. doing and everything like that. Right. All right, here we, we are. We're ready to broadcast. We got Steve, we got Ted. Have you ever done a podcast before? Never done a podcast <laughs> Walter! I got so many questions for you, Ted. For me? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, come on. What's yeah. it like to be Steve-O's dad? At the, the depths of my alcoholism and drug addiction, you know, like, there was never a point when I ever really shit on my family. Well, I think that, I, that, that, you know, behind all the insanity, you know, lives a pretty sweet kid. You know, we don't know each other that well, but I know you a little bit. Like, I, I, know, I know what you like when the camera's off, and, sure. you know, you're a lot more grounded, you know, shockingly more grounded than I think people would imagine. I think that's fair to say, and I should also say, uh, say thank you for the kind words. It's, uh, it's appreciated. Right. And we've known each other for going on. I mean, I just uh, turned eight years sober. Right. So, Congrats, uh, man. So, that's amazing. I mean, I guess that was probably... We probably met. I was about in, about a year into yeah, it. Yeah, I think that's I think that's about right. So we've known each other, you know, somewhat peripherally for a good seven yeah. years. But yeah, 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 for sure. You know, I listened to uh, the Marin uh, interview the other day, and I, and it was it was before you had gotten back to me, and I'm like, fuck, man, what am I going to talk to this guy about? He just he just like ah, told the whole thing with Mark, and then you're like, I want to have my dad on the podcast, and I was like, that's genius. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, that's perfect. Like, this has never happened before. So this is really It's insane. never happened before. Because I consider you to be uh, an authority on not just a vegan lifestyle, but, but health and nutrition in general. Selfishly, I kind of hope that, that we can get into a little bit of uh, a discussion that, that might influence you know, the old man to, to be a little bit more careful about, about what, what he does and doesn't right. eat. Like, brought up my lifestyle my health like my, my you know my heaven forbid my addiction um, I just barked me I, I turned really really harsh really cold really fast and uh, and just shut down by the end of it I was just so in such a bad way that I had effectively burned all the bridges in my career and I became like like quite truly uh, just a nasty person. I think that the way that we treat others um, is is a pretty pure reflection of how we feel about ourselves. The flow of happiness and fulfillment needs to cease to come from the value of Steve-O, the commodity and the entertainment industry, and really needs to begin to come from from inside Stephen Glover and without external validation, and that is oh, sort of, and you, oh, you would describe it as having hobbies and interests and, and, and oh, make okay. yourself happy. In, in the words of JFK, let me tell you this about that. <laughs> <laughs> You've got interests in depth that you don't even know about. Well, uh, I mean, help, help me. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast over. He was great, man. And then we went on a hike with his dad and his dogs afterwards, which was really nice. His dad was pretty cool. He was very engaging. Really cool. Those guys live on different planets, and it's so interesting that they have such a close relationship because they're, in many ways, they're so different. But then the more you talk to them and the more we kind of plowed into it, the more you realize, like, oh, they're more similar than you would imagine. Yeah, definitely. I think the coolest thing about the podcast today is. We saw a really different side of Steve-O. It was much more a conversation with Steven Glover than it was with Steve-O, the performer. I can't wait to share the full episode with you guys. Um, that was a pretty special afternoon, would you say? Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me along. Yeah, it's cool. Thanks for your help. Yeah. Steve-O was amazing. That was such a cool experience, and it has me reflecting back on this whole podcast journey that I've been on. I started the show about three and a half years ago in a warehouse in Kauai without any agenda whatsoever. And now it's become this whole thing. In the last few months alone, I've interviewed Ariana Huffington, Russell Simmons, and people actually reach out to me. In fact, I just got an email the other day from Steve Case, the founder of AOL, who wants to do the show, which is like completely insane. 
So how does this happen? Well, I can tell you that it certainly didn't happen uh, because of some kind of plan, and it didn't happen because of some growth hack or shortcut that I took. I started the podcast because I was inspired. I was inspired to just create something. I wasn't sure quite what, but I started it, and I kept going. I showed up for it. And that is the secret to the success of this podcast. I just focused on trying to make the best show that I possibly could, to do it consistently, and to give myself permission to allow myself to fail and to stay out of the result. So much about life is just showing up. I have a screenwriter friend of mine, and when he talks about writers and writing, he always says that the writers that make it are the ones who refuse to give up, the ones who just keep writing. After they write a script, they don't sit around and wait to see if it sells or how people respond to it. They just start writing the next thing. And that's great advice because you have no control over the fruits of your labors. The only thing you have control over is the content itself. So I've started this vlog with the exact same spirit that motivated me to start the podcast. This isn't about how many views I'm going to get or how many subscribers to my channel. It's about trying to make something interesting, something that is a creative expression of my authentic self, my life. It's about making each vlog the best that I can within the parameters of my busy life. And it's about a commitment to consistency. It's about giving myself permission to fail and staying out of the results. So if you feel stuck in your life right now, maybe you have a creative impulse, but you're just afraid to try something new, it's probably because you are afraid of how it's gonna be received or because you don't have it all figured out yet or most likely because you're afraid to fail. But to engage in that thinking, that's the failure. So my advice, just begin. Mm -hmm.